Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. We're in our little booklets. I have two of those, but we've been talking about our words and how they affect not just our lives, but the lives of people that uh, are around us. Now, with that said, your words affect other people and other people's words affect you unless you're aware of that and you control that and minimize the damage that they do to you. Now, I'm going to say this. If you're around somebody who's always putting you down or always putting someone down, uh, well, here you go. This is not nice, but I don't know any other way of saying it. If you're around somebody that's always putting someone else down when they're not with you, and there was someone else, they're putting you down behind your back. So, sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna get out of your business now. And if that was for somebody, because I didn't mean to say that. Uh, I wanna talk about words again. And late, the last teaching snippet we did, we were talking about how uh, our words are like a sword that stabs people in the heart. I used Luke 6.45. This is one of my favorite scriptures. It always has been because I can talk to a person for just a few minutes and I know what's in their heart. And when I saw this verse, I understood it. All my life, even when I was an atheist, I could talk to someone in business or whatever and I knew everything I needed to know about them within two minutes of talking to them. And this scripture where Jesus is talking explains everything. It's Luke 6:45, and I just want to read it again because it's one of my favorite scriptures. It says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. This scripture is one of the truest, truest scriptures that I have seen play out. Whether I'm dealing with Christians or non-believers, it doesn't matter. If it's a personal relationship or a business relationship, this scripture right here hits it every single time. When I was in sales, I knew that scripture right there I knew what was in a person's heart from talking to them. So anyway, let's get started because I want to talk a little bit now because I ended and I uh, yesterday snippet and I said, be careful of your faults because your life will follow your faults. And we talked about how to change what's in our heart. And I quoted Proverbs 4.23 there, that being careful of your thoughts. Today I want to pick up on that and I am intentionally moving very slowly through this teaching snippets that I'm doing on these because these teachings can change your life right now today if you determine that you want to change your life and change other people's lives that are around you. But you get to decide that. And I could go off on a little snippet right now talking about how God's not in control of everything. He's not in control of your attitude and he is not in control of your thoughts and he is definitely not in control of the actions that you do that come from what you see, hear, and think. He is not in control of your actions, you are. And the only person that can change your actions is you. And for you to change your actions, you have to change your heart. To change your heart, you have to change what you think. To change your thinking, you have to change what you see and what you hear. Whatever you put into your brain, your brain calculates it and stores it, and it goes into your heart and your thoughts, and you will live that out. So I pray that you understand that these teaching snippets that I'm doing, I'm going very, very slowly, methodically, and trying to just reiterate several things because you've got to get this if you want to see good fruit come out of your life. Now, I want to go over and I want to talk about another scripture today. I'm in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, and it says, Finally, whatever is true and whatever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of a good reputation, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise and things to be said good, 
Think continually on these things. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. Now, that scripture right there tells you that God wants us, every person, to think on good things so that the good things will be stored in your heart. And when you get them in your heart, they're going to manifest and come out of your mouth. And I'm t this is just where the rubber meets the road, guys. The only way, the only way that you can change your, your, your thinking, your heart, and what's coming out of your mouth is for you to change what is going in to your head. And you have to make good decisions on what you allow your eyes to see and what you allow your ears to hear. I remember this uh, little thing, it's called, and it was three monkeys. And it says, uh, see no evil, hear no evil, and do no evil. Did you know there's so much truth to that? If I don't see evil and I don't hear evil, I'm not ever going to be tempted to do evil because it doesn't exist if I'm not seeing it and hearing it and putting it in my head. Anyway, guys, I'm going to uh, call it a day. But I'm not through with this yet because we're going to keep talking because I do have some really encouraging things to say about words, some of my own experiences of the power of words in my life. When I started speaking the right words, the right things started happening. And I remember the days when the words that I used was nothing but an overflow of what was in my head and in my heart. And it was what other people had put in it through their careless, hurting words. And it was destroying my life, destroying my life. And I had to shut that down and change my life. Did you know that my life has been exactly what I said the first time we did a snippet on this? My tongue is a ready writer. When I started speaking the right things in my life, my life changed. And here's the thing. I wasn't even a believer. That's how much power God has given us with our words. Our words are powerful regardless of whether you're a believer or a non-believer. Your words will write your future and many times the future of other people. So God bless you guys and I'll see you right here again to talk some more about words. Bye-bye.